Hey, have you ever wanted to create a design that doesn't take forever to create but really packs a punch when you lay it out on your t-shirt mock-ups? Well, in today's episode, I'm going to show you just how you can go about doing that. We're going to be focusing on the Halloween niche, but again, you can use this particular design style for any niche or any holiday that you want. So with that said, let's head on over to my computer to get started. Let's go. Okay, so welcome to my computer screen. As you can see, I'm currently on Canva. I've already opened up a canvas size 4500 pixels by 5400 pixels. Many of you know that that is the industry standard. And I changed the background color to black. Now, what I did, I already did some of the legwork because I've shown this a number of times on my channel. So I don't want this video to drag too long. I went on to a few AI image generators like Leonardo and Recraft and Midjourney, and basically I cherry picked six of my favorite Halloween character monsters, and I'm going to use these characters to create a Halloween pop-out effect as if these monsters have taken a Polaroid photo of themselves to send it to a recipient stating, you know, doom and gloom is on their way to give it a bit of an eerie Halloween feel. How are we going to go about doing that? Well, the first thing that we want to do is we want to import one of the characters that we are going to be creating a design for. And for this video, I thought we'd go with the witch. Now, I've already done a few of them in advance, which I will be showing you later on in this video. So stick around for that. And when I generated this image of the uh, the witch, I really loved the facial expression on her. What I do want to do is I want to get rid of the background moon. Now, this was one of the first images that I generated. Um, and it did generate with this background because I was playing around with a number of different prompts. After generating this image for the subsequent images, I did change the prompt to include a plain white background. It just makes it that much easier to extrapolate whatever part of the image you want to keep. And in this particular case, the, the monster in question. But I really loved the facial features, the expression on this particular character. So I said, well, you know, I'm gonna use the magic grab tool on Canva in order to get rid of the moon. And it's really simple to do. Basically, you wanna click on the image to make sure that it's toggled, and then click on Edit Image, and then in the Magic Studio, you wanna click on Magic Grab. Once you do that, obviously Canva is going to scan the image, it's going to work it to analyze it, and then you have one of two options. You can either brush on where you want it to keep, or else you can click on the click button, which is what is toggled. Now I'm gonna click on it. And as you can see, a lot of the witch has already been highlighted in purple. So I'm clicking on it, but I want more of it. Now I could actually click on other aspects of the image that I want to keep. And as you can see, Canva is working and it has highlighted the broom. You can do that for all of the parts of the witch in this particular case until it's all highlighted. Alternatively, you can just click on brush and then just continue to click on the parts that weren't toggled on by Canva in the initial click, all right? Uh, let's just click on, click again and click on the hat and see what comes of it. Okay, there are a few parts that haven't been highlighted in purple, so let's just click on brush to make sure that we do include them. We don't wanna find any holes in the image at later stages after we've done so much work only to be disappointed. So as you can see, there's different strengths of the purple. Don't worry about it. So long as the part of the image that you want to keep is highlighted in some degree of purple, um, you're good to go. So we're just gonna click on grab. We can just click on the witch, move it. You can see all of this background, which we don't need. I'm gonna click on that, click on delete, and here we go. We now have a nice isolated witch image. Okay, so now the next thing we wanna do is we want to find an appropriate Polaroid photo frame. To do that, we're gonna click on elements, and then, I just close this here, okay? And then you're just gonna type in Polaroid. Okay, I already have it clicked over here, Polaroid frame here, and we'll click on graphics, and then you've got a whole slew of different Polaroid film graphics that you could utilize. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to click on the one that I use in my other designs, for the other monsters, just so that there will be consistency. As you can see, it's more narrow along the uh, the vertical edges. And now it's just a question of placing it over the witch or the monster in question. Now you will notice that I'm leaving certain aspects of the witch, in this particular case, her hat, outside of the Polaroid film. And I'm doing that on purpose so we can get that nice 3D pop-out effect. If you want to, you could also click on the witch uh, image. So we're gonna click on position, we're gonna to toggle her, and if we want to, we could actually enlarge it just so that it'll be nice and big to fill in the frame of the Polaroid. 
I mean, that works really good. We've got a lot of her hat sticking out there um, and we're good to go. Okay, so now the next thing that we want to do is we want to duplicate via this particular layer. So we are in the layers palette here. All you need to do is just click on the layer holding the, the witch and we're going to right click and then we're going to choose duplicate. And as you can see now, we've got another uh, layer of the witch on top of the previous one. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a shadow effect. Now to do that, we're just going to click on edit image, making sure that we are obviously toggled onto the top layer of the witch. We're going to click on shadows and then we're going to click on drop shadow. Now when I click on it, I don't want you to get concerned in any way. The image is going to shrink a little bit and that's absolutely okay. So we there, we just clicked on it. As you can see, it has shrunk down. I can play around with the blur amounts, the angles, the distance and the intensity, but for all intents and purposes, the default settings worked really well for me on the previous ones, so I'm going to keep it as is. And now all I have to do is I just have to grab the witch. And as you can see, it's a lot smaller than the layer below. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the handles here and we're just going to increase the size. And this is where you need to play around a little bit. It shouldn't take that long, but you know, you want to zoom in and zoom out and increase the size of the witch until you roughly get it basically in line with the layer below. Okay, so we're gonna zoom in and I think that works really good. We've got that nice uh, drop shadow effect behind. And now what we wanna do is we want to crop some of this image out of the entire design so that we'll get the Polaroid photo, you know, that white border underneath back into the limelight so that we can put an interesting caption on it. So we're just gonna make sure we are toggled on the top one. I'm just gonna grab the handle here and I'm going to bring it up until we get in line with the bottom part of the of the Polaroid film. Now, you might be saying, well, we've lost that effect. The background is black, it's lost. You're not wrong. What we're gonna do is we're going to put another colored background behind. And to do that, we're just gonna hit R on the keyboard to bring up a rectangle, or rather in this particular case, a square. I'm going to click on the color picker here and as you can see, Canva gives you the main colors of the witch image below. And it's just a question of choosing one of those or maybe another color to see what's going to work well for it. So if we choose this blue, I think it's gonna be a bit too bright. Let's choose this one here. It might work well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag it and I'm going to open it up so that it's effectively covering the entire area of the witch, that, that squarish part. And now we're gonna move it to the background. So we're gonna click on position. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna bring it down behind the witch, okay? And as you can see here, we've got that nice drop down effect over the background color that we've used. I think this color works really well. Now you can see at the bottom here, we've got the bottom layer part of the witch still showing. So we're gonna zoom out and we're gonna just drag that up. It doesn't have to go all the way to the top. So long as it's covered, it's hidden behind the white border of the Polaroid uh, photo. And as you can see here now, we are almost done. So now the next thing that I wanna do is I want to group all of these elements together. So we're gonna click on the image. I'm gonna click on position again. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to click all four components of the image, leaving the black background separate. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on right click and I'm going to choose group. Now the reason why I'm doing that because now I'm going to download the image with a transparent background and with the previous images that I worked on, when I didn't do this and I downloaded it with a transparent background, the colored background in the Polaroid photo also disappeared and I didn't want that. So by grouping them together, I am effectively telling Canva, I want all of this to remain in the image. We're going to download with a transparent background. So we're gonna do that right now. So I'm gonna click on share. We're gonna click on download making sure that PNG is set, and then we're gonna to toggle transparent background and I'm going to download it. As it's downloading, I'm going to create another canvas by clicking on add page. And once it is downloaded, let's just zoom out a little bit so we can see the entire canvas on the screen here. Okay, as you can see, it has been downloaded. I didn't give it a name, so it's just called heading five. That's absolutely okay. So we're gonna click and we're gonna drag it onto the canvas. All right, now we have that Polaroid 
photo of the witch with her obviously her hat popping out from it it gives it a nice effect to it now what we want to do is we want to add a caption and actually put a little saying on the polaroid as if it were a message being sent to the person okay so let's just make sure that we're nice and centered here we're just going to move that around until canvas shows us that we are actually centered Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a caption underneath the Polaroid photo. So we're going to click on heading and we'll increase the size to about 400 so we can see what we're doing. Now we'll click on the font picker here and what we'll do is we're going to type in S-H-L-O-P, Schlop, which is the font style that gives that sort of dripping, blood dripping effect here. So now what we'll do is we'll just click on it and we're going to drag it and place it accordingly here. All right, and now we'll double click. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in see you soon, okay? And as you can see, the font size really worked well for that. We will be changing the color to it momentarily, but let's add the rest of the caption here, and then we'll be able to play with the colors thereafter. Okay, so using ChatGPT to give me some expressions, the one that came back to me was stirring up trouble and you're next. So in order to do that, again, we're gonna click on heading, and we'll take that up to 400 again. Again, we will be changing the size of the, photo, the, the font. Okay, so now we have a really nice size font. The font style that we're going to be using for the caption here is called Scary Stories. So we're gonna just type that in. So Scary Stories. All right, and there it is, all results, the font. So we're gonna click on that. And now we'll double click and we'll type in um, stirring in all in caps up trouble all right and now we want to give it that nice circular effect so we're going to click on effects we'll choose curve all right and it's actually quite good but let's just tighten up the circle a little bit to do so we're just going to grab that handle and we'll take it up to uh, let's say 66 okay now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this so that we can do the bottom part of it so in order to do that just click on position again we're going to right click on that layer and choose duplicate and now we'll drag it down go back to effects and without touching anything on the line we're just going to double click on the number go to the beginning and key in a minus symbol so that's going to invert the curve as you can see here it has done it and now what we're going to do is we're just going to drag and we're going to place it now as you can see here we're really close to the bottom margin and at the top there is a little bit of room so let's just click on position we're going to toggle all of them and now we're just going to move it around we'll zoom out a little bit so that we can actually center it and that way it'll look really great okay i think i'm quite happy with that all right so now what we need to do is we need to change the colors of the font and again we want to sample colors that are going to complement um, the photo of the witch in this particular case so let's click on let's go back to um, position here and we're going to click on see you soon we'll change the color so again, we can sample colors from the photo itself. So if we chose this green, it's a bit too light. Let's choose this one, a darker one. We can even go for an even darker green if we want to. Let's just sample. Let's go with something like this so that it stands out. Okay, that's actually cool. And now what we'll do is we'll have a nice lightish green font or maybe even this yellow in the buckle on the witch's hat. So let's sample that. So let's go, let's click on stirring up trouble. We'll click on the eyedropper and we're just going to go over to the buckle here and we'll choose one of the yellows let's choose this one okay not too bad what if we had to go for the darker yellow that we just saw it was almost orange yeah that might work okay um what do you guys think um let me know in the comments would you have gone for the yellow or would you have gone for this orange or would you have gone for something totally different let's stick with this orange for the moment okay so now let's go on to the bottom part of the caption we'll choose the color and we'll click the orange as well. I believe it was this one. Yes, that's the one, okay. And as you can see, see you soon changed for me. So let's just bring it back. So we'll click on that, choose the color, and we'll go for this particular green. So as you can see here, we are basically nearly ready. The only thing that I wanna do is I wanna give a little bit of a tilt to the Polaroid photo and see you soon. Now to make sure that they obviously tilt in line, we're gonna go back to position, back onto the layers, and we're gonna to toggle see you soon. Hold the shift key, we're gonna to toggle the photo. We can either group them or we can just grab the handle and tilt it too as well. So let's just tilt it. And if you wanna shrink it down or whatnot, let's group it anyways. That way when we shrink, we know we're doing both. Okay, 
and then we can just place it wherever it is that we like. And basically, you have your design there. Now, the only thing left to do is to download it with a transparent background so that obviously you don't have the black and then upload it to your respective print-on-demand platform. Let me just show you quickly the other designs that I created earlier on. Okay, so here's the first one. I've got the perfect spot for this jack-o'-lantern. See you soon. And, and you can see that I actually added a little bit of blood splatter onto the uh, the Polaroid photo to it as well, just to give it more of that Halloween uh, feel to it. Okay, this is the one with the Frankenstein. So this was it being put together. And then the final version looked like this. Bolts tightened, fists clenched. See you soon. All right. And then the other one was this one pertaining to the zombie. And then the final version looked like this. Guess who's craving a midnight brain snack. See you soon. Okay, there you go. You can see it all in total. There. So as you can see, it really doesn't take that long to create. It's effectively three layers with respect to your images and then putting in your text that obviously is going to be fit the design that you are creating. And again, you don't necessarily need to do this just for Halloween. You can do this for any holiday, any niche that you want to give that pop-up effect and just something different to the norm of what we see when we're browsing through any of the marketplaces. So I certainly hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor, smash the like button. If you're new to my channel, click on the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon so that you'll be informed each and every time that I upload a new video to my channel. And now I want to invite you to click on the thumbnail that has just appeared on the screen right now, bent on helping you to reach more success with your print-on-demand business. Thanks for watching. I'll see you there.